Hello, this is Mike Green, Dodgy on the Lightwave forum, and I'm just going to give you a quick run through of um, using Unreal Bridge, which is now is 2019, to send instances across to Unreal. Because if you're anything like me, you use instances just about everywhere, like for trees and for bottles and shells and all sorts. So one of the cool things that you can do in Lightwave 2019 is send those instances directly across without having to turn them into clones or using clones uh, of bottles and keeping your scenes nice and tidy. So here we've got a scene which has just about all the different types of um, instancing you can get. So we've got here a motion path where the item is moving along a motion path and instances are being laid along the path. Uh, here we've got a, another motion path, but we've got some offset of the items running along the motion path. Here we've got a rectangular array of um, instances but with various forms of rotational offsets. So random, basically random pointing in directions. And here we've got a radial array, which you can see has an offset. So the object, the, the instances go up in a spiral with that offset set. Here we've got an arrow if we zoom in on that item, you can see has instances at its points, so it's using the point instancer. Here we've got a polygon type instancer, where each instance is at the center of the polygons of the arrow. You can see how it's all working out there. They're all aligned to the normal of those polygons as well. Here we've got an instancer set to surface. So we've got all three different color arrows randomly aligned to the surface of the arrow, or the base arrow. Here we've got a um, here we've got a spline based instancer. So if I just select that, you can see we've got the uh, arrows going along the spline. We've got 13 of them. And finally, we've got an instancer which is a particle emitter. So it's got an FX emitter attached to it here. And then we've got instance generator on it, which has two different colored arrows on the set to the particle type of the instancer. Okay, so let's send these across to Unreal and see what happens. So I'm just going to pull up the master plugins page and connect the Unreal bridge. And I'm going to turn off live sync for now and just send that across. So if we pop across to Unreal, I'm just going to grow the viewport a little bit. and then zoom in, and you can see it's just compiling the shaders for those three different types of arrow. And you can see we've got our um, path-based instance here, just like we have here. We've got our other path-based instance here, just like we have here. We have our rectangular array instance, you can see the colours are starting to come in now as the there we go. So it's fully coloured now. And if I just zoom in on that, you can see the arrows match the instances that they have in this in this radial instance. And they're all matching their orientations as well. It's kind of hard to get it perfectly aligned, but there you can see the green arrows pointing down, and those blue arrows are pointing down, and so on. And if 
I just pull back a bit. Here we have the radial array, which we can see here. Just move that bit. There we go. So you can see the radial array is working again with the arrows being aligned as they should be. Here's our point instance. Let's just get over to it. There we go. So you can see the arrows are again aligned with the normals of the instances, uh, with the normals of the arrow that they're based on. Here we've got the polygon based instancer. And again, the arrows are pointing in the direction they should be pointing in. And here's the uh, the surface-based instancer. You can see all the instances are matching up perfectly with their lightweight counterparts. Finally, well not finally, but here is the spline-based instancer. And again, it's matching up with its lightwave counterpart perfectly. And finally, definitely finally, uh, here is the particle based instancer. And again, you can see all the instances are aligning with the uh, instances on the lightwave version. Okay. So we've got those all aligned. Now, what we can do is, if we have checked that the editor preferences show the performance, yeah, use, less, use less CPU when in the background is turned off. And if I just zoom out a bit, and then go to the Panel, the Unreal Bridge. I'm going to turn on Live Sync, and as I get on like all the instances together, there we go. And as I drag this time slider, you can see the instances are all changing in Unreal, which is pretty cool. Um, this doesn't mean that they will animate because the values aren't set. It does mean you can adjust things live in Flywave and they will update that position in the Unreal Editor. So if I just turn on Virtual Studio Live and rotate these around, you can see that arrow is adjusting down here. It's hard to get to grips with two different navigations at the same time. Um, here we go, I'll just adjust it there. And I'll just select it and zoom in. So you can see as I rotate the arrow around, the instances are following it and keeping up with their low wave counterparts, which is pretty fun. Also, on the motion path, instances, you can see, just move this up a bit, you can see as I drag the timeline, the instances are sliding towards the front of the motion path, and a similar thing is happening in the Unreal Editor. So if you want to have it stretching out like that, you can do that. There we go. See, it just had a little hiccup there where it's trying to catch up. So, um, that's a very useful new ability to Lightwave 2019 because I imagine you'd want to populate your scenes with trees or rocks or whatever, and you can't really have instances in Lightwave and then have them in like different places in the Unreal Editor. But with this, you do get true matching of where the instances are in Lightwave 
and then in the Unreal Editor so you can place them directly, which is very handy. So I hope you'll find that handy too. Thanks.